Coming up on Ag Week TV, one Minnesota farmer is turning to a crop he hasn't grown in more than 15 years. The Northern Crops Institute at NDSU is teaching a group of food manufacturers from around the country how to make better pasta for their customers. And see how the dry weather is impacting calving season in South Dakota. Hello, welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. Spring planting came to a halt this week in parts of the region due to rain. Many area growers say the rain was a welcome sight, even though it slowed them down a little. We headed out to see how the planting season is moving along. Our first stop, Harwood, North Dakota. We found Bob Berberick at Dakota Plains Ag. He says the rain is making growers happy. It's good news. We, we needed some welcoming rains and it, it's going to do us some good. He says growers have been busy in this area and so far in good shape. I'd say we probably got 85% of the spring wheat in and probably very little corn in yet. There's barley in. We got a few guys raising some barley for Bush and West Fargo. Down the road in Holly, Minnesota, we caught up with Steve Rodkey. He's been out planting this spring, but on this day, the rain had him in his shop. That's been a real good spring. Uh, it's actually been a little dry, but I love planting in dry conditions. You get better seed to soil contact. And we just got a half inch of rain and it's just been a beautiful rain. Rodkey says he's changing things up a bit this year. I'm trying canola for the first time in about 15, 20 years. They've come with different varieties now. Before we had to swat it and roll it, and now we're gonna we're gonna try straight cutting it this year. So it's gonna be kind of a learning curve again. <laughs> <laughs> canola is not a crop you often see in this area. According to my insurance agent, I'm the only one raising it in Clay County. But Rodkey says it just made sense to try it again. When we went through the numbers in December and there was about a hundred dollar difference between canola and wheat at that time and it just made the cash flow go so much nicer. And that's a long time from harvest, I know. <laughs> he says the hillsides here will be a vibrant yellow this year as many of his neighbors are planting more sunflowers. It's going to be a challenging year for everybody. I actually kind of feel sorry for the bankers because I mean if things don't go right and we have a drought this summer, it's going to be tough on there because, I mean, they're holding us. Rodkey farms with his father, Kermit. It's that time of year. Jonathan Knutson and Mikkel Pates are out making crop stops again. This week, they're finding field preparations and some early planting. Mickle found retired farmer Melvin Wendell burning weeds and cattails off some land that hasn't been usable for about 10 years. He's helping his son, who has taken over the operation near Sanborn, North Dakota. They grow corn and soybeans. They hope to start planting corn this week. It's been too wet to farm this piece of land for several years, but this year, it's a different story. We're dry. I mean, it's, we got very little there's probably enough topsoil moisture to get a crop started, but it's, it's, we're going to need some rain to, to keep it going. Jonathan Knutson found work is getting started in the Northern Valley as well. The main concern is prices, but a lack of moisture is a problem right now too. The last couple of years have brought timely rains for most, but after a dry winter, most fields need rain now. I would say this week it has really started to ramp up. Uh, ground conditions won't be the problem here. Uh, most of the fields uh, don't have a lot of excess moisture in them. Uh, it's just a matter of probably ground temperature and how soon they want to get going. Uh, we did see an increase in wheat planting this week early. I would think uh, sugar bee planting is progressing. Uh, it may be a tad early with the ground condition temperature-wise for corn at this time, uh, but I would imagine they'll go to corn as soon as they get the wheat in. 
Wheat is the main crop in that area, but Steve says he expects to see an increase in corn and soybeans this year. Calving season is well underway. In fact, the National Ag Statistics Service reports it's a little ahead of average around most of the region. Mickle Pates found one operation that's well ahead of normal, and they're crediting the mild weather. After an easy El Nino winter, farmers in South Dakota are enjoying an excellent calving season. Well, it's been a real mild winter for us, haven't had a lot of snow, We've had good grazing, uh, temperatures were uh, exceptionally warm, January, February. Uh, the cabin has gone really good. Uh, we'd like to see some moisture, but uh, for the cabin end of it, it's, it's been really good. You know, mud-free, mud uh, no frozen ears. The Shoneman family has a cow-calf operation near Aberdeen, South Dakota. They also grow wheat, corn, and soybeans. The calving season will wrap up in the next few weeks, and they've been happy for the rain, for the crops, and the cows. We did not have very much snow all winter. Even the planting wheat this year, the, the ground right on top was, was dry, and I think our subsoil moisture has kind of been depleted a little bit, so... The, the rain is welcome from the cattle in to green up the pastures, fill dugouts, just so we have abundant grass for the cows next year or throughout the summer. While they've enjoyed working in the warm weather, a lack of moisture has caused some health problems for the cattle. So what kind of respiratory things are you seeing? Mainly dust and then just the change in temperatures we're seeing. Is it unusual? Um, more so than normal, yeah. The dust has really been affecting the calves. And we're also seeing a few more scours, more coccidiosis, it seems like, this, this year. In the middle of the calving season at Aberdeen, South Dakota, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week TV. The Shonemans also say the mild winter cut feed volumes by 10 to 15 percent, and costs were down because of lower commodity prices. Coming up on Ag Week TV, some of your favorite pasta companies come to Fargo to learn about making their product better for you. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. The North Dakota Soybean Council invests checkoff dollars to increase soybean demand, increase yields, and open new markets. The soybean checkoff has resulted in stronger prices and higher yielding varieties. Checkoff dollars fund research to bring solutions to farmers' greatest production challenges. Global demand for North Dakota soybeans for human consumption, animal feed, and commercial use has never been greater. Checkoff Dollars, investing in a profitable future for North Dakota soybean farmers. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Total Ag offers the latest and greatest in seeds from Legend and Wensman, featuring the newest in cutting edge seed technologies and access to every genetic and seed trait platform. Total Ag can help you choose the seed that's right for your specific field, leading the way to better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag Industries by phone or visit TotalAg.com. When your job requires being seen to be safe, look for high visibility workwear from Home of Economy, where you'll find the best in Carhartt high vis t shirts, hoodies, and safety vests, plus other top selling enhanced visibility coats, jackets, caps, and gloves. Day or night, rain or shine, stand out and stay safe on the job with help from Home of Economy, your high vis headquarters. We've got you covered at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Agweek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Agweek provides the most up to date information on the markets the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Representatives from some major food manufacturers came to Fargo to learn how to make better pasta. The Northern Crops Institute runs about 15 of these courses through the spring and summer for groups from around the world. 
They've been offering the course for more than 20 years, but as Rose Dunn found out, it's changing to meet the changing needs of the companies and their customers. It's a changing industry right now. For us, it's very exciting. The food industry is going through a revolution led by changing consumer demands and their ability to voice them through social media. Whether it's organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, or just the highest quality Durham pasta, the Northern Crops Institute at NDSU is helping food manufacturers respond. Really the purpose of this course is that we want to make sure that people are exposed to the, to the Durham wheat that we grow in this region. We want to highlight the quality characteristics of the Durham that our Durham farmers grow and the quality of pasta that can be produced from the Durham. So we look at the technology, the exclusion, the manufacturing of the pasta, and some of the uses for that. I got it. Christy Tallarico is here from Berkeley, California. She's a product innovation manager for Annie's, the company known for its kid-friendly, natural, and organic foods, especially that perennial favorite, mac and cheese. She's always looking for a way to make it even better, and that starts with understanding how it's made. We're just learning how the product works and the capabilities that we have currently. Um, we're always looking for new, new innovative ideas in the, in the pasta world based on our consumers' needs. Jim Carper runs the pasta plant owned by the Mormon Church in Salt Lake City. He's new to the job. So he came to this class to learn the basics of pasta manufacturing. I'm learning it. I mean, I hope coming out of here, there might be some things that I could incorporate. Um, but for the most part, we've got new machinery we just put in, and so we're learning and understanding the new machinery with our old practices of being in an older plant. So we have a lot of things we're trying to bring together. So whether it's classic noodles made with North Dakota semolina or high-protein, gluten-free pasta made with lentils, soybeans, or other crops, food scientists at the Northern Crops Institute are working to make sure it's the best quality it can be. Rose Dunn for Ag Week TV. About 20 people were in this class. General Mills and Barilla are a couple of the other major manufacturers that had people in the class. The NDSU Agribusiness Club held a debate about GMOs as part of Ag Week. Megan Klosterman, a junior in Ag Economics and Social Media Coordinator for the Agribusiness Club, says it's easy for people to believe that GMO crops are bad for them if they don't have a connection to agriculture. There's a growing gap between farmers and consumers, and it's easy for people to believe everything they read on the internet. I mean, all they see is this marketing and all these things they read on the internet. It's important that we give them the real story of their food and where it comes from. Carl Peterson, owner of Peterson Farm Seed of Prosper, North Dakota, says although many studies find GMOs are safe, many consumers are still wary of them. But he says farmers can't feed the world without GMOs, and he appreciates the opportunity to talk about it. I love talking to people who are opposed to not just GM, but modern agriculture, because it tends to go pesticides and GM and opposition to chemical fertilizers. That all tends to sort of group together a lot of times. And I love engaging uh, those viewpoints. And, you know, it's not always a one-sided thing. I've learned some things uh, from those folks as well. Some timely rains showed up this week. Is there a chance for more showers ahead? Your weekly weather outlook is up next. And later, find out how horses and juice boxes go together. Quality is not a word we take lightly. From the materials we use down to the details, it's always been about building something the right way. That's how you know it's a true Minn Kota window. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, 
only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. I look down the line and I see every step this window goes through and the people that help create it. I love working with a team that truly cares about helping make true Minn Kota windows. Weather portion of Ag Week now. A different way of looking at soil conditions here in the Northern Plains this week. Dated from April 22nd. This is a, a rough cut of April rainfall. Okay, so forget everything that happened before April 1. This is where it's been wetter than average, and it's a fairly large part of North Dakota, South Dakota, a little bit still dry in the central, north central part of Minnesota, but most of this region quite wet over the last uh, three weeks or so, and that's extended up into many areas of the Corn Belt, which has had its fair amount of moisture the last few weeks as well. So, yeah, moisture conditions in much of North Dakota still a bit behind average. South Dakota mostly above average. That hasn't changed, but we have gotten some rain in most areas. Jet stream pattern is going to be a little different this week. We still have this split flow pattern, which is still allowing for fairly slow motion. Of course, the weather system, which brought all the rain to the northern plains last week, was a result of a split flow pattern between the polar jet and the subtropical. Well, now it's the polar jet itself that split and over the course of the week that will continue to uh, uh, affect our weather. There's not going to be a lot of stormy weather in, along the southern branch of the subtropical jet, but the polar jet becoming a bit stronger looks like it may bring another weather system in late this week into the northern plains, so there will be a chance for more moisture. It's also likely to remain fairly cool. So here's what I'm talking about. The last week of April looks like another weather system even after the one this weekend in a few more days, maybe late this week affecting South Dakota, Nebraska, turning into thunderstorms across the southern plains. Ours will mostly be rain, but this next weather system will likely have a northern limit and north of that there will be little or no moisture across the far north. The Corn Belt will have some stormy weather in the south, not as much across the north, and of course up here in the northern plains, I can't predict this exactly, but at some point it's going to go from fairly dry to fairly wet north to south, and where exactly that dry line sets up, it's not clear. One thing I can tell you, it does look like overall the weather will be cool this last week of April. As we go into the first week of May, the Pacific Northwest will start getting wet again. Some heavy snows into the Rocky Mountains, typical late winter, late spring snows there. The Southwest is looking quite dry. Corn Belt, eh, meh. I don't know. It might rain a bit. Might be some storms, probably not as wet as it's been. It's looking like the Northern Plains, North Dakota in particular, will likely be not only dry the first week of May, but also fairly warm the first week of May. So the general outlook as we get into the last week of April, the first week of May, wet in the southern part of the Northern Plains, dry in the northern part of the Northern Plains, cool weather this week, warmer weather next week, probably drying out a bit as well, setting the stage for, as usual, the need for timely rains during May. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and endangered species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one-size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. 
Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins, with proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. The University of Minnesota Crookston hosted hundreds of the country's best ag students for a national ag judging contest. The students competed in 16 different events, ranging from agribusiness management to crop and animal judging to the first ever ag sales competition. Jonathan Knutson has more. Some of the nation's top college ag students are here in Crookston, Minnesota. They've come for an annual national judging competition. New this year is an innovative ag sales contest. About the time I'm ready to go out and spray and kill my weeds that I got in the field, so. Sure. So I think our best option for your needs here is going to be tilt. Most of the other contests, they are being tested on knowledge, different skills that they can use in different ways in the future. Here, this is one of the few that um, they're doing exactly what they could be doing as, as a career in the future. And it's kind of really exciting to me to, to have the opportunity and the challenge really to sell a product to someone you don't really know. Um, you get a little brief a snapshot of what they are and what their characteristics are, um, but it, it's a little intimidating I think, but at the same time it's, it sounds like a, a real challenge and a good opportunity to learn and grow and, and get some real life experience. So we'll keep our eyes and ears open, we'll watch the weather forecast, we'll scout some wheat, and then we can determine if that second application is necessary. Hosting the event is a real plum for UMC. It benefits the school, the Crookston community, and the entire region. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. UMC students usually do very well at this contest, but as host school, they couldn't compete this year. Up next on Ag Week TV, one young boy gets juiced competing in his first horse show. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Hi, I'm Amy Anderson, pro golfer. I'm grateful for the small town values I learned growing up in Oxbow, North Dakota. Those values led me to great success at NDSU and a great year on the LPGA Tour, but I'll keep striving to become the top women's golfer in the world. 
Let me tell you about some other folks from small North Dakota, Minnesota towns who have proven themselves to be big time pros. The market advisory firm Progressive Ag of Fargo, North Dakota. For the past eight years, they've consistently beaten Chicago Board of Trade firms by a lot. In corn, they beat the other top marketing firms in the country by 65 cents a bushel. For 100,000 bushel corn farmer, that's $65,000 a year better than the number two firm. For a 40,000 bushel soybean farmer, over a dollar a bushel extra, $40,000 better than the number two firm. So team up with the big time pros from Progressive Ag and let them put their North Dakota values to work for you. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're gonna find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. At a recent area horse show, Grand Forks nine-year-old Josh Kleiner competed for the very first time. Photojournalist Trevor Peterson was there to capture Josh's emotions as he took part in the juice box race. I started mentoring him last summer at Stable Days Youth Ranch, and then he's taken a, a horse class through with me now. Like the second to last day, she offered me to come ride her horse. Recently, we've been working on a lot of steering at both the walk and the trot. You go to Clucker, give her some bigger kicks, and if, if those don't work, tell her trot. Well, you have to go down, and then you have to drink a juice box. Let's the entire juice box. And then you set it down, you gotta race back as quick as you can. Hopefully the flavor's good. What flavor are you hoping for? Strawberry. He's just really grown to love the horses, and it's helped him calm down and be a little bit uh, more mellow. Ride safe, listen to Janie. Yes. Very proud of him. It's a horse. Time. Oh gosh. Okay, I think I can do this. One, two, three. We're good. You ready, Josh? Yeah. Nervous. Can I go? Go, go. Try. What was our main goal? Uh, to not fall off. Yes, that is our goal. One thirty, you are now on deck. Yeah. That was scary. Ah, good job, Grace. Yeah. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.